Okay, hi guys. Um, I'm just doing a bit of a demo of um, my 2013 viewport 2.0. Um, is a current project I'm working on. You can see a, a final uh, batch render I've got, but it, it's a batch render from viewport 2.0. Uh, that's also on my YouTube channel. It's just going up now. Um, I'm just, just going to give a quick demo. If we come to renderer viewport 2.0, turn that on. Um, we get and turn on 7, just press 7 on my keyboard, activate my lights. Um, this is my 2013, and we get um, much better performance in the viewport. Uh, widgets and manipulators and like, the little icons, everything draws better than it used to. Uh, maybe in 2012, a lot more things are supported now. Um, if you come to the option box, there's similar settings to, or pretty much the same settings as 2012, just things appear to work faster. Uh, shadows work better. Um, I may just turn on darker shadows there. Um, and you can tweak lighting setups and the main thing now is the uh, we can tweak lighting and batch render out of it really nicely. Um, it's, it's really improved a lot of things. So with uh, different types of settings, we can turn on AO here. We now get ambient occlusion on the ground, where we can tweak the amount of ambient occlusion shown in a radius, to spread it out a bit more, or tighten it up. Um, it's a pretty good look for real time. Um, that's one of the ones that slows you down quite a bit. We've got anti aliasing, so with that off, you'll see here, especially on things like the cables. Um, we uh we have quite jaggy lines, but we turn that on and we get that all nicely smoothed out. Um, but the more of these effects you add, the the more it will slow down a little bit. Um, we can do motion blur. Um, that's great for animation and things, but uh, pretty useless for when we're just modelling in the viewport and stuff. We're doing a turnaround or something like that. Um, we can now do 32-bit floating point in the viewport too, so without going into detail into what that is, um, you've got the banding here, only a few levels of grey in 8-bit, um, but when we turn on this, we have millions of levels of grey there, so we, even in hardware we, we get a really nice result. Um, so with our batch rendering, you can filter stuff out here. Uh, one of the big tips I found, when I was trying to render this in uh, batch rendering in uh, render settings here. We can set it to hardware 2.0. I was getting a lot of very squished renders where the whole frame was sort of collapsed in on itself. Um, one thing I found is that you it, it's best to render at the resolution that your monitor is on. So I've got a, a widescreen 1920 by 1080. I, I set that there and then I got excellent results. And um, I got round about say uh, Around about about a three second render time, um, and I was able to do a whole whole turnaround and whack it up on the channel really quickly. So I think that the future is really good for hardware rendering like this, and uh, I'm going to definitely be using it for work in progress renders at least for now. Thanks.